After a moment, Lu Shang carefully read through the three techniques. As he absorbed the wealth of information, he began to feel tired and sleepy. He closed his eyes, placed his hand near his mouth, and started yawning. Then, crossing his arms, he stared intently at the system windows in front of him, deep in thought. The advanced technique of stellar refinement technique was called the art of immortality. It dawned on him that this was just the beginning. As he pondered over the concept, Lu Shang began to visualize the martial will and realized that the true key to ascending from level 6 to 7 lay in condensing the martial will. This process involved merging essence, energy, and spirit into a single entity. Once unified, this potent combination had to be fed back into his body, resulting in an additional improvement in his physical constitution. However, the leap from level 7 to level 8 was an entirely different matter, far deeper and more complex. He recalled how Zhang Kuei had ascended to level 8 and had demonstrated an extraordinary ability to grab light with his hand. To achieve this, one needed not only immense martial willpower, but also the ability to break the bridge of the earth with one's body. This involved a profound transformation of one's blood, condensing it into a dan, a step towards immortality. Special willpower could be condensed into forms like a spear or a sword, capable of opening the bridge to the heavens. This connection allowed an individual to merge with nature and the universe, reaching a state of unparalleled harmony and power. Lu Shang began to imagine himself meditating in a way that infused martial willpower into every inch of his flesh and bone. Each movement he made would contain a trace of the power of nature. If Lu Sheng managed to master this technique, he would be able to kill his enemies with a single movement, as the destructive power would far surpass that of a master-level practitioner. This was the biggest difference between level 7 and level 8. Although Zhang Kuei had managed to ascend to level 8, Lu Sheng knew exactly what he lacked. Turning his head to one side with a serious expression, he pondered how Zhang Kuei had forced the improvement of his body, which had left him with a deficient foundation. In reality, Zhang Kuei could not be considered a true level 8 grandmaster. This realization was crucial for Lu Shang's understanding of the path he needed to follow. With his hand under his chin, Lu Shang began to read carefully the information displayed on the system window. Several minutes later, the expression on his face changed drastically. He began to shout with excitement as he discovered that immortal cells were the key to true mastery. This was the true inheritance of the stellar refinement technique. The introduction of the concept of immortal cells was essential for achieving a state where even if a star extinguished, he would not perish. Even if all things withered away, he would endure. This meant that only by reaching this level could he ascend to level 8. He began to imagine himself with immortal cells. This was the physical strength that Lu Shang was seeking. The reason he could be more powerful than common masters was because he possessed an immortal golden body. At level 7, his body was already comparable to and even stronger than, that of a level 8 grandmaster like Jiang He. Lu Shang checked the information on the technique. The first step in the art of stellar immortality was breaking one's dan. This involved using immense energy, blood, and martial willpower to cultivate a single cell, an immortal cell. When he first began practicing the stellar refinement technique to achieve an immortal golden body, Lu Shang had initially thought of it as merely a metaphorical aspiration. Having a body like a star and striking with the force of a star seemed like exaggerated imagery to him. It was akin to comparing a level 9 martial saint to the sun and moon in the sky, grand in concept, but could it truly manifest in reality? With his arms crossed, Lu Shang read through the contents displayed on the system windows around him. A smile crept onto his face as he considered the deeper implications. Could a martial saint truly shine like the sun and moon? This question resonated deeply with him reflecting his aspirations for immortality. As he pondered, he realized that if the Dark Illuminator King's scripture reached perfection and detail, even immortal cells could achieve their maximum potential. In his mind's eye, Lu Shang began to imagine himself floating in space, surrounded by a radiant golden energy. The concept fascinated him deeply. If every cell in his body could become immortal, he could achieve true union with the universe. Mastering the stars and attaining eternal immortality became not just a goal but a vivid image of his future self. Lu Shang envisioned the creator of his futuristic skills as the supreme being of the universe. He estimated that not even they had reached the level he aspired to. The scope of his ambition surpassed that of the illuminating Dark King, a grander and more profound project that transcended mortal limits. Lu Shang dropped his arms and fixed his gaze on the system windows before him. As he immersed himself in thoughts of achieving immortality, a pressing question surfaced in his mind. 
What resources were necessary to attain such a lofty goal? Closing his eyes with a faint smile, he contemplated deeply. He calculated that even an entire star would not provide enough resources for what he sought to achieve. In that moment, Lu Sheng's body began to emit immense energy and his blood stirred with anticipation. He reminded himself that this technique was invincible. If he could just achieve an immortal cell, his martial body would surpass that of common great masters. With two immortal cells, he believed he would be unstoppable. And with three, he envisioned himself as invincible. Closing his eyes once more, an intense aura surrounded his body as he brought his hands together. Within the realm of his dreams, he began to manifest his inner Dan. Lu Sheng knew that any mistake made in practice would have minimal impact on reality. This assurance bolstered his confidence, and within seconds, his Dan began to materialize. The process demanded all of his energy and blood. Extending his hand to the side, a blue aura emanated from it. Opening his eyes, he fixed his stare upon his Dan, contemplating its significance. Was it truly necessary to break it? Without dwelling too long on the question, he resolved to find out for himself. With a resolute expression, Lu Shang decided to take the plunge. With determination etched on his face, he placed his hand on his chest and commanded his Dan to break. The air crackled with energy as, slowly but surely, his inner Dan began to shatter into fragments. A surge of intense power erupted from his body, causing excruciating pain that racked every fiber of his being. The agony was unbearable. Lu Sheng extended his hands to the sides, bent his body, and screamed in torment. The raw energy pouring out of him threatened to overwhelm his senses. Yet, amidst the anguish, he found a moment of clarity. With a deep breath, he regained control, placing his hand back on his chest. He made a decisive choice to condense his Dan once more. As he opened his mouth, blood trickled down his chin, adding to his suffering. The pain intensified, but he gritted his teeth and closed his eyes, screaming through the ordeal. Meanwhile, his consciousness, manifested as a blue fire, sensed his distress. It reached out, placing a comforting hand on his head. Gradually, with its guidance, the chaotic energy began to stabilize. With renewed focus, Lu Shang concentrated his efforts, gathering energy in his forehead. In a matter of seconds, he succeeded in cultivating an immortal cell, a pivotal achievement in his quest. The immortal cell glowed on his forehead, radiating with potent energy. Dropping his arms, Lu Shang clenched his fists tightly. The energy from the immortal cell synchronized with his body, amplifying his strength. His forehead emitted a radiant aura, blending the energy of the immortal cell with his own golden aura. With a deep breath, Lu Shang channeled this combined power into a mighty punch aimed at the ground. The impact was cataclysmic. The earth shattered beneath his strike, sending debris flying in all directions. The force of his punch created shockwaves that reverberated through the dream space. Above him, the sky erupted with golden thunders, crackling with unleashed power. The force of his strike obliterated buildings and structures in the vicinity. Several seconds passed after Lu Shang sighed and deactivated the technique, causing the golden aura surrounding his body to gradually dissipate. His powerful strike had laid waste to the entire dream space city, leaving behind a trail of destruction with a large crack in the ground. Witnessing the sheer devastation wrought by his power, Lu Shang couldn't help but question if this was truly the strength of an immortal cell. Slowly, he began to rise to his feet. Despite having utilized only a fraction of the immortal cell's power, the punch he had unleashed was significantly stronger than any he had previously delivered. Lu Shang stood, shaking his fist in awe and staring at it intently. A smile spread across his face as he marveled at the amalgamation of star-like strength, blood, energy, and the profound grip of the celestial realm, all fused into a single devastating blow, thanks to the immortal cell. With determination shining in his eyes, Lu Sheng extended his hand towards the sky. In that moment, he recognized this strike as the culmination of extreme strength and unparalleled skill. Resolute in his decision, he decided to christen this formidable technique, the Fist of Heaven. Surrounded by a lingering golden aura, Lu Sheng tightly clenched his fists and fixed his gaze straight ahead. His expression grew serious as he named his strike, feeling the weight of its potential and significance. However, as he stood there, the exertion of unleashing such power took its toll. Lu Shang began to feel an overwhelming fatigue creeping over him. His eyelids grew heavy, and he struggled to maintain control over his body. Gradually, he lost his balance and collapsed backward onto the ground, 
completely drained of strength, helplessly lying on the ground. Lu Shang could do little but stare at the sky. In his weakened state, he realized that his exhaustion was also linked to the insufficient energy and blood within him. He understood that to achieve greater feats and master the power of the immortal cell, he needed to gather more resources. As he lay there contemplating his next move, three colossal monsters materialized in the dream space sky. Their eyes burned with a fierce, murderous intent as they fixed their gaze upon Lu Sheng. Fortunately, Lu Sheng didn't need to worry about gathering more resources, as he was soon heading to the military district in the east. The battlefield on the front line teemed with exotic beasts and dangers, promising both peril and wealth, exactly what he needed to satisfy the insatiable hunger of the immortal cell. With his last reserves of strength, he stretched his hand towards the sky, contemplating the immense power an immortal cell possessed. As he pondered, a question gnawed at him. Would he be able to confront a martial saint at the Grandmaster level with just ten immortal cells? He gazed upwards, imagining scenarios where ten cells might not suffice. Determined, he resolved that if needed, he would cultivate a hundred, or even a thousand cells. With such power, he believed he could vanquish the Ji Dao martial saint with a single strike. But for today, he decided to take it one step at a time. Closing his eyes, Lu Shang departed from the dream space and woke up in his room. Sitting on his bed, he turned a glance at the clock. Seeing the time, he raised a hand to his head, realizing he had slept for a satisfying twelve hours. With a serious expression, he activated his senses, causing a blue aura to emanate from his body. This allowed him to observe his surroundings clearly. In the room, he saw his father deeply engrossed in a game of chess with someone, his sister Lu Qinghe wearing headphones, her eyes closed as she danced in the yard, and his mother busy cooking in the kitchen. Assessing the situation, Lu Shang concluded that the henchmen of Ji Dao were unlikely to come after him. He placed a hand on his knee, turned his head to admire the view outside the window, and reflected that the Ji Dao martial saint would not risk tarnishing their reputation by engaging in a deadly battle with a 19-year-old over two relatives who were ultimately disgraceful. Lu Sheng swung his legs off the bed, slid into his flip-flops, and contemplated the upcoming encounter with Lian Su. Unlike the serene demeanor of the extreme martial saint, Lian Su promised to be a more volatile challenge. Determination etched on his face, Lu Sheng shrugged into his shirt and left his room, descending the stairs with purpose. His goal was clear. He needed to neutralize the threat at its source, finding an opportunity to thwart Lian Su's plans. Entering the kitchen, Lu Shang grabbed a bun his mother had prepared. With a tray in hand, she glanced at him disapprovingly, lamenting his habit of leaving without eating properly. Ignoring her concern, Lu Shang acknowledged her with a nod and turned away, munching on the bun as he moved through the house. Passing by the living room, something on the television screen caught his eye. He turned swiftly to see the news displaying an interview with He Ling Su. Taking a bite of the bun, Lu Sheng watched with a smile spreading across his face. It had been a while since he had seen He Ling Su, and he suddenly found himself with something specific to discuss with her. Several hours later, Lu Sheng made his way to He Ling Su's laboratory. Stepping through the doors, he was greeted by a nervous receptionist with brown hair. Her demeanor shifted noticeably upon seeing him her hands instinctively going to her chest as she nervously asked how she could assist him. Lu Shang regarded the receptionist calmly before inquiring about He Ling Su's whereabouts. As she looked at him more closely, she found herself taken aback by his handsome appearance. Blushing slightly, she gestured towards He Ling Su's laboratory and stammered that He Ling Su was indeed inside. She offered to escort him there, but before she could finish, Lu Shang politely declined. With his hands casually tucked into his pockets, he turned and began making his way towards the laboratory on his own. Meanwhile, another receptionist with blue hair, named Lee, approached her flustered colleague. Lee placed a hand near her mouth and whispered, playfully teasing her about being mesmerized by Lu Sheng's presence. The mesmerized receptionist snapped out of her trance, blushing furiously at being caught off guard. Lee continued, asking if she had been enchanted by Lu Sheng's charisma. Her colleague, still flustered, admitted to being captivated by him and inquired about his identity. Li pointed upwards with a smile, recounting the rumors that Lu Shang was He Ling Su's distant cousin. According to hearsay, Lu Shang was not only exceptionally handsome but also a martial arts prodigy. He had claimed the championship in the Dragon Kingdom martial arts tournaments and recently emerged victorious in another prestigious martial arts competition. As the receptionist listened to Li's words, her blush deepened even further, her admiration growing. She turned her gaze towards Lu Shang with newfound admiration, 
wondering if he truly possessed such impressive credentials. Her heart fluttered at the thought of encountering him again, eager for another glimpse of the enigmatic young man who had left such a profound impression on her. In the quiet hum of He Ling Su's laboratory, she stood focused, clad in a pristine lab coat, holding a test tube filled with a vibrant green liquid. Her mind wandered deep into contemplation, absorbed by the complexities of the experiment before her. The faint glow of the fluorescent lights overhead cast a soft illumination on her features as she delved into her thoughts. Suddenly, the tranquil atmosphere was interrupted by the arrival of Lu Shang. Stepping into the laboratory, he cut a determined figure, his presence drawing He Ling Su's attention away from the test tube. He asked succinctly if everything was prepared, his voice breaking the silence and prompting He Ling Su to refocus her gaze upon him. Startled out of her reverie, He Ling Su turned towards Lu Shang, meeting his eyes with a calm demeanor. With a gentle gesture, she confirmed that everything was indeed ready assuring him that all necessary components were in place. Acknowledging the effort He Ling Su had put into the preparations, Lu Shang donned his own lab coat, approaching the test tube to inspect her work. He complimented her on the meticulousness of her setup, expressing genuine appreciation for her dedication to their shared endeavor. As Lu Shang observed the contents of the test tube, He Ling Su moved closer, standing beside him. Placing a reassuring hand on his shoulder, she leaned in slightly, her other hand resting lightly on his arm. Turning her head towards him, she confided in a lowered tone about the renewed troubles caused by her mother's side. Listening attentively, Lu Shang absorbed her words with a solemn expression. He understood the complexities of her familial dynamics and the challenges they posed. With a brief touch to his mask, a habitual gesture when contemplating serious matters, he assured He Ling Su not to worry. He reassured her that he was already aware of the situation involving her mother's side and promised that once he completed his current tasks, he would assist her promptly in resolving the issue. With that assurance given, Lu Shang turned away from He Ling Su, his mind already focused on the task at hand. He Ling Su, her hand instinctively pressed to her chest, observed with a mix of concern and awe as Lu Shang moved decisively across the room. His aura had undeniably grown stronger since their last encounter prompting her to question the rapidity of his martial arts progression. As Lu Shang approached the table laden with various ingredients, his gaze fixed on the array before him. Mushrooms, plants, vegetables, and even a lizard lay scattered, awaiting his expert scrutiny. He turned to He Ling Su, determination etched on his features, and signaled that it was time to begin. With a focused exertion of his martial power, Lu Shang initiated the merging process. His golden aura enveloped the ingredients each element blending seamlessly under his skilled manipulation. The laboratory pulsed with energy as the components fused together, a testament to Lu Shang's mastery over his craft. Several tense seconds passed before Lu Shang deemed the mixture complete. He carefully transferred the amalgamated substance into a waiting test tube, his movements precise and deliberate. With a subtle gesture, he levitated the test tube, golden energy radiating from its contents like a beacon of his prowess. Examining the test tube intently, Lu Shang's expression shifted abruptly. In a swift motion, Lu Shang removed his mask, his finger lightly touching his nose, an unconscious habit when confronted with unexpected revelations. He raised the test tube to his lips and drank deeply of the golden liquid within. As the elixir coursed through him, Lu Shang's entire demeanor transformed. His eyes widened with newfound clarity, a revelation dawning within him. The sensation was unlike any he had experienced before, a testament to the potency of He Ling Su's concoction. With one arm dropped to his side and the other pressed against his chest, Lu Shang contemplated the implications. He realized that he alone possessed the capability to achieve a second condensation of the blood pill, an extraordinary feat in the martial world. Glancing towards the corner where the remnants of the costly ingredients lay piled, Lu Shang couldn't suppress a sigh. The materials had come at a staggering cost worth several millions. Yet, if his goal was to replace every cell in his body with immortal cells, he needed far more resources. Resources that would demand an exorbitant and perhaps unattainable sum of money. Lu Shang stood in He Ling Su's laboratory, contemplating his next move. He gently tapped his chin with his finger, deep in thought. He recalled the modest earnings from He Ling Su's business, realizing it amounted to only a few billion units per year. This realization left him somewhat disappointed considering the vast resources he needed to further his goals. Suddenly, a spark of inspiration hit him. He closed his eyes briefly, remembering something he had read online. 
There were rumors that skilled individuals could earn substantial wealth on the battlefield. The idea intrigued him. With a determined expression, he opened his eyes and clenched his fist against his palm. He knew there was no time to waste. Without hesitation, Lu Shang slipped his hands into his pants pockets and turned away from He Ling Su. He made his way towards the laboratory exit, his mind set on exploring this new opportunity. He hoped that the information he had read wasn't misleading. Several hours later, Lu Shang found himself at Baiha Airport. Sitting in the bustling waiting room, he observed people engaged in conversations or moving about hurriedly. He crossed his legs, settled comfortably, and pulled out his phone. Determined to gather more information, he began searching online. Minutes passed as Lu Sheng scrolled through his phone, absorbed in his search. He decided to contact Commander Yu Fei, hoping to discuss the potential for joining the battlefield. However, his call went unanswered. Perplexed, he stared at his phone screen. It dawned on him that Commander Yu Fei must be incredibly busy, possibly due to urgent matters on the battlefield. With a hint of concern, Lu Sheng contemplated the situation. It seemed the original plan for Dong Qingxue and Qin Xiaojun to pick him up had likely changed amidst the unfolding events. He wondered if a critical situation had arisen, prompting their immediate deployment. Standing amidst the airport's bustling environment, Lu Shang paused. He withdrew into his thoughts, one hand still in his pocket while the other held his phone. He glanced around, observing people going about their daily lives, seemingly unaffected by the uncertainties of martial challenges and battlefield dynamics. Lu Shang stood amidst the tranquil surroundings, contemplating the peace and happiness that enveloped the land. He understood that this serene moment was not merely happenstance, but the hard-earned result of countless soldiers sacrificing their blood and lives on the battlefield. Their dedication had paved the way for this tranquility, a privilege he now cherished deeply. As he turned his head slightly, a smile played on Lu Sheng's lips as he recalled information he had come across in the system. Deep within the front lines of the Eastern Military District lay untapped reservoirs of rare metals and hidden silver. Currently occupied by exotic beasts, this unexplored zone intrigued him greatly. In his mind's eye, Lu Shang envisioned himself as a miner, delving into the uncharted territories. He reasoned that if he desired to amass substantial wealth swiftly, this area held immense promise. After all, it remained untouched and ripe with potential. At that moment, the atmosphere at the airport was electrified as a military fighter jet touched down on the runway with a thunderous roar. Travelers and airport staff alike paused to watch the unexpected arrival. Among them, a girl with long, flowing hair approached a window near gate 12. Resting her arms on the sill, she peered out with wide eyes, a mixture of awe and confusion on her face. Turning to her friend, who stood nearby with a bag slung over her shoulder, the girl exclaimed in a hushed tone, why is there a fighter jet here? Her friend, facing away from her as she began to walk towards their departure gate, half turned her head over her shoulder and replied, Our plane has landed. Maybe there's some special mission. Her words hung in the air as she gestured for her friend to follow. Let's go. Boarding has been announced, she added, her voice carrying a note of urgency. Meanwhile, across the bustling airport lounge, Lu Shang sat quietly in a corner. Tall and casually dressed, he watched the commotion with mild interest. As the girl turned her body to the side, her eyes caught sight of Lu Sheng. She was taken aback by his striking appearance. His dark hair tousled just enough to give him a rugged charm, and his thoughtful expression hinting at a deeper introspection. Intrigued, the girl nudged her friend and nodded towards Lu Sheng. Look at him, he's handsome, she whispered. Together, they approached Lu Sheng with a confident stride. Hey there, handsome boy, the girl greeted cheerfully a playful smile on her lips. Want to join us? She added, her tone light and inviting. Where are you headed? Lu Shang, momentarily lost in thought, snapped out of his reverie at the sound of her voice. He turned towards them, his gaze shifting from one to the other as he tried to place their familiarity. With a warm smile, he responded politely, I'm not on the same flight as you. The girl, undeterred, glanced towards the window with a mischievous glint in her eye. There's only one flight just announced, she teased, winking at Lu Sheng. Noticing his hesitation, she playfully jabbed, So, which one are you taking then? Her friend stifled a laugh, covering her mouth with her hand and closing her eyes briefly. She couldn't help but find Lu Sheng intriguing. At that moment, the sound of jet engines reverberated through the airport as the fighter jet approached the designated area and gracefully came to a stop just outside the terminal window. Moments later, the pilot opened the cockpit and turned towards the group of people standing beside Lu Shang. 
With a warm smile, he raised his hand towards the sky, waving in their direction. Upon seeing the pilot's friendly gesture, the two girls standing beside Lu Sheng hurriedly approached the glass window, their hands pressed against it in astonishment and confusion. The girl with the bag slung over her shoulder couldn't help but voice her wonder aloud, questioning why the pilot was greeting them. Her companion, equally perplexed, pondered silently about the pilot's identity and intentions. In a swift turn of events, Lu Sheng exited the airport waiting room and appeared on the runway, drawn by the commotion outside. As he approached, the pilot disembarked from the fighter jet and started walking towards him. Lu Sheng, his hands casually tucked into his pockets, maintained a serious demeanor as he advanced to meet the pilot. The sight of the pilot approaching him left the two girls utterly shocked. They exchanged bewildered glances, struggling to comprehend the surreal scene unfolding before them. Closing the distance between them, the pilot extended his hand towards Lu Shang, initiating a handshake. With one hand casually resting behind his back, he studied Lu Shang with a keen gaze and introduced himself as Senior Colonel Qin Huaihu from the 1182 Regiment of the Eastern Military District, under the command of Commander Yu Fei. As they shook hands, Qin Huaihu's warm smile widened when Lu Shang, with a curious grin, asked if he was related to Qin Xiaojun. Qin Huaihu affirmed with a chuckle, explaining that they were indeed uncle and nephew. Taking a closer look, Lu Shang noticed the insignia on Qin Huaihu's shoulder, a badge adorned with three arrows and a dot, indicating his rank was one level higher than Dong Qingxue and others they knew. Qin Huaihu turned away from Lu Shang, his steps purposeful as he headed towards the waiting fighter jet parked on the tarmac. Observing Qin Huaihu's departure, Lu Shang turned his body slightly, calling out to him. He inquired with a hint of curiosity if their destination was now the Eastern Military District and why they hadn't sought him out earlier. Turning his head back towards Lu Shang, Qin Huaihu explained calmly that they weren't bound for the Eastern Military District after all. His gaze shifted upward towards the sky, his expression growing serious. He proceeded to enlighten Lu Sheng about the critical situation unfolding on the front lines due to new rifts appearing in the cave. Commander Yu Fei had been engaged in fierce battles there for several days. Their team's mission was to reinforce the front lines, and Qin Huaihu emphasized that he would personally escort Lu Sheng there. Lu Sheng, maintaining his casual demeanor, slipped his hands into his pants pockets as he began walking towards Qin Huaihu. With a relaxed tone, he queried how long it would take them to reach their destination. This question seemed to catch Qin Huaihu off guard, and he turned fully towards Lu Sheng, his expression a mix of astonishment and concern. He asked directly if Lu Sheng wasn't afraid of what lay ahead. Pausing momentarily, Lu Sheng distanced himself slightly from Qin Huaihu, his gaze shifting to the ground briefly before he responded calmly. He admitted he wasn't afraid at all. In fact, he expressed a genuine desire to join the front lines. Qin Huaihu, perplexed by Lu Sheng's unwavering confidence, let his arms fall to his sides. Turning towards Lu Sheng once more, he couldn't help but marvel at the young man's demeanor. Bringing his hand closer to his face, he scrutinized it thoughtfully. Memories flooded back of his own battles on the battlefield over the years. Despite his experience, he had only reached the peak of level 6, far from the threshold of becoming a master. He couldn't suppress a mix of sweat and a wistful smile, uncertain if he still harbored any hope of achieving mastery at the age of 57. As Lu Shang made his way towards the waiting fighter jet, he glanced back slightly towards Qin Huaihu, his expression serious and thoughtful. He knew the journey ahead was fraught with danger, and he needed to understand the situation on the front lines. With a measured tone, he asked Qin Huaihu to brief him on the current state of affairs. Qin Huaihu met Lu Shang's gaze with equal seriousness. He began to explain that the situation on the Eastern Front had been tense for years, though it had seen some relief in the past two years. However, the recent emergence of a new rift in the cave, classified as Level A, had escalated tensions once more. The entire Eastern Front line had been forced to retreat in response. Listening intently as he continued towards the fighter jet, Lu Shang's interest peaked upon hearing that the rift was classified as Level A. He turned his head back towards Qin Huaihu and queried if rifts in caves were categorized similarly. Qin Huaihu extended his hand calmly, confirming that rifts were indeed classified based on their scale and the strength of the exotic beast within them. For a level A rift, beasts of at least level 5 would emerge, and the depths of such caves held unimaginable challenges. Qin Huaihu noted that the most formidable rifts were triple S level, thankfully absent in Commander Yu Fei's territory. Perplexed by this information, Lu Shang sought clarification, asking what exactly an A-level rift entailed. Qin Huaihu locked eyes with him, 
gesturing towards the sky as he began to illustrate the severity. He explained that even a level 8 grandmaster would risk death in an A-level rift. Lu Shang turned fully towards Qin Huaihu, taken aback by the gravity of the situation. He questioned if an A-level rift was truly that terrifying. Considering the implications, he concluded that higher levels like double and triple A, and even S-level rifts, would pose insurmountable challenges even for a martial master at level 9. Qin Huaihu extended his hand towards Lu Shang, his demeanor calm and collected as he replied. He acknowledged that theoretically, the scenario Lu Shang described could happen. However, he emphasized that in practice, no grandmaster or martial artist would willingly venture deep into the rifts. As long as one stayed within safer limits, even an average martial artist of level 5 or 6 could survive in a level A rift. Lu Sheng listened intently to Qin Huaihu's explanation, his expression thoughtful. A smile tugged at his lips as he drew a comparison in his mind. To him, the rifts resembled dungeons in video games. Deeper exploration meant facing tougher challenges. As long as one didn't delve too deeply, facing weaker enemies initially posed less danger. Meanwhile, Qin Huaihu kept his hand extended towards Lu Sheng, maintaining eye contact with a gentle smile. He expanded on their defensive strategy at the front lines explaining that most martial artists didn't need to enter the rifts directly. Instead, they maintained a defensive perimeter, waiting for exotic beasts to emerge. Their task primarily involved neutralizing these beasts as they surfaced. As Qin Huaihu spoke, Lu Shang's understanding deepened. He clenched his fist tightly, staring at it intently as thoughts raced through his mind. He realized that if he could successfully clear an S-level rift, he might uncover crucial truths behind the exotic beast invasion. 